Hello again everyone, Happy New Year and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Jasmine Mund and I'm currently a Graduate Mechanical Engineer on the Nuclear Graduate Scheme. Today is Wednesday the 10th of January 2024 and I'm here to give you the first Fusion News update of the year. Before we go into the key headlines for today's episode, I wanted to let you all know that we've set the dates and opened registration for the Fusion Industry Association Policy Conference. It will be held March 20th to 21st, 2024 in Washington, DC. There will be a range of different attendees and will be an excellent opportunity to engage and network with leaders in government, industry, regulations and science. So check it out at the link in the description below as registration will only be open until spaces are filled. And now on to the key headlines for today's episode. One, China seeks nuclear fusion leap through new R&D company. Two, sustained artificial sun promised by 2026 in fusion energy upgrade. Three, opening the magnetic bottle of a tokamak causes particles to rush inward. Four, jet to be repurposed after delivering final plasma. Five, US fusion energy dreams edge closer to reality, Congress permitting. And make sure you stay till the end, because as usual, I have a couple of bonus stories that you definitely don't want to miss. One, China seeks nuclear fusion leap through new R&D company. Our first piece of fusion news today comes from Bloomberg about China intensifying its pursuit of fusion technology through the establishment of a new national company and a collaborative consortium of industrial giants. The China National Nuclear Corporation-led consortium launched on December 29, 2023, and aims to propel fusion development using high temperature superconductors, large capacity energy storage and tritium production comprising of 25 central government-owned enterprises and research institutes, including major energy and steel firms like State Grid Corp, China Three Gorges Corp, and China Baowu Steel Group Corp Limited. The group seeks to address key challenges in the field and unify national resources for the development of fusion technology. China also revealed plans for China Fusion Corp in a bid to lead the industry's development, competing with global counterparts such as the US, the UK, and Japan. In a statement taken from CNNC's website, Zhao Wu Shudong, the vice president of the CNNC, stated, Controlled nuclear fusion as an ideal solution to the global energy challenge has become the forefront of scientific and technological competition among major countries, and that China seeks to cultivate a high-quality energy industry by utilising its central governance system to direct national resources and industry input towards this. China actively participates in the international quest for nuclear fusion power, being a member of the $25 billion fusion power research project, ITER, while concurrently conducting independent studies in Chengdu. Two, sustained artificial sun promised by 2026 in fusion energy upgrade. Our second piece of news comes from Newsweek and explores a significant stride towards achieving sustained nuclear fusion, as Korea's artificial sun K-star undergoes a groundbreaking upgrade to endure temperatures six times hotter than the sun's core. This enhancement is poised to play a crucial role in advancing the world's largest fusion project, ITER. Operating on magnetic confinement within a tokamak, K-Star now incorporates a tungsten diverter, replacing the initial carbon diverter to extend plasma reactions. This upgrade aims to overcome limitations posed by the temporary adherence of plasma particles to the carbon diverter's surface, which ultimately restricts the overall reaction duration. Previously achieving a 30-second operation at temperatures of 100 million degrees Celsius, K-Star's new goal is in an impressive 300 seconds by the end of 2026. While China's east reached a 403-second extended reaction in 2023, the South Korean team aims to additionally contribute valuable insights to ITER's development and optimization, enhancing its accuracy and efficacy. ITER, currently under construction in France, anticipates producing its first plasma in 2025, with full-scale operations to commence in 2035. 3. Opening the magnetic bottle of a tokamak causes particles to rush inward. Our next piece of news comes from an article on the US Department of Energy's website, and looks at recent breakthroughs in magnetic confinement for tokamak plasmas, a critical aspect of nuclear fusion research. The tokamak's pedestal, or plasma edge, is prone to instabilities called edge localized modes, or ELMs resulting in bursts of particles and energy, leaving the plasma and striking the tokamak wall. Traditionally, mitigating ELMs involves modifying the magnetic field, but this approach often compromises plasma pressure and fusion output. However, experiments at the D3D National Fusion Facility showcase a novel approach. By applying magnetic perturbations, researchers observed an unexpected improvement in pedestal confinement, 
leading to increased plasma density and enhanced fusion performance. This breakthrough challenges prior expectations and introduces the possibility of mitigating ELMS without sacrificing fusion efficiency. The findings suggest that for future fusion pilot plants operating at levels vulnerable to ELM-induced damage, magnetic perturbations could play a crucial role in maintaining device integrity. This research not only provides insights into pedestal confinement, but also contributes to the ongoing development of optimal magnetic perturbation systems for efficient fusion in tokamak scenarios. 4. Jet to be repurposed after delivering final plasma. Our next piece of news comes from an article on the Nuclear Engineering International, shedding light on the Joint European Taurus, or JET, of the UK Atomic Energy Authority's Cullen facility. The renowned facility has concluded its 40-year journey of groundbreaking experiments, delivering its final pulse, marked as number 105,842. Present for this historic moment, UKAA CEO Professor Sir Ian Chapman emphasised the pivotal role JET played in accelerating fusion energy development through decades of dedicated research. The final experiments on JET's last plasma day explored novel territories, attempting an inverted plasma shape and directing electrons at the inner wall to enhance understanding of beam control and damage mechanisms. These conclusive experiments, as with previous ones, are set to contribute to the development of the ITER project in Cadarache, France. JET, having achieved milestones such as the world's first controlled release of fusion energy and record thermal power output, will now undergo repurposing and decommissioning until around 2040. The decommissioning phase is expected to yield valuable insights for the fusion community by analysing reactor materials and changes over time. JET's legacy, originating from its multinational collaboration since 1979, will continue to shape the fusion landscape, even as the UK transitions to a domestic fusion energy strategy, including the development of the spherical tokamak for energy production or STEP push type fusion energy plant in Nottinghamshire. The UK government's commitment to fusion is evident with a £220 million investment for the first phase of STEP, aiming for a fully evolved design and approval for construction by 2032. 5. US fusion energy dreams edge closer to reality, Congress permitting. Our final piece of news comes from The Register, reporting major advancements in fusion research in 2023. After achieving fusion ignition in late 2022, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory's National Ignition Facility replicated the feat four times marking significant progress towards fusion energy. However, practical fusion reactors remain distant as the perennial expectation of domestic fusion power being 10 years away persists. The US Department of Energy allocated $42 million for fusion energy research, aiming for breakthroughs at LLNL, Colorado State University and the University of Rochester. Dr. John Edwards, LLNL Senior Advisor, clarified that NIS research primarily serves the National Nuclear Security Administration's Stockpile Stewardship and Management Plan, not domestic fusion energy. While acknowledging the technological gap between NIF achievements and commercial fusion, Edwards expressed optimism for potential results in 2024. And if everything goes as planned, we could see doubling or more in fusion yields in the next year, contingent on uncertain funding. Plans for 2024 include 10 to 20 NIF ignition experiments exploring avenues to enhance efficiency and scalability. Collaborating with the universities using DOE funding, LNNL aims to form an inertial confinement fusion energy programme, paving the way for a public fusion energy sector. The DOE envisions a fusion pilot plant ready by the mid-2030s, emphasising self-sustainability, heralding a new era in collaborative fusion research. And now, as promised, here are the bonuses. The first couple of bonuses are articles that you may have missed from the end of 2023. One is from the European Commission about the EU and Japan celebrating the start of operations for JT60SA. And the second is from the UK government website about the UK AEA awarding £7.4 million to five organisations to develop lithium technologies for use in a sustainable fusion energy fuel cycle. If these don't sound familiar to you, definitely make sure to go and have a read. Next up is a video from an article that I found on Euronews, where you can see into the ITER project. If you haven't seen many images of where it's up to currently, this might be of interest to you. My last two bonuses are YouTube videos that I think that you might enjoy. The first is from the Royal Institution and is a lecture put together by the UK AEA titled The Need for Fusion. 
This is the first in a series of three lectures, so if you enjoy this one, definitely make sure to keep an eye out for when the next two are released. I found this to be a really interesting video, so I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. The other YouTube video I mentioned is from The Economist, and it's titled, Is Nuclear Fusion the Future of Clean Energy? This one is only six minutes long and looks at fusion, how it works and whether it's achievable, with a particular look at the UK fusion industry. And that's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you did, don't forget to drop a like, comment or subscribe. And if you'd like to know more about any of the stories or bonuses mentioned today, as always, the links will be in the description below. And you can follow our Fusion News Extra podcast for a more in-depth look into the topic of fusion energy. The link to the FIA conference will also be down in the description, so definitely have a look as there are limited spaces and it's set to be a really exciting event. Thank you for watching today's episode. I will see you next time.